How's everybody holding out? We're on, what, hour 17? Because we could stop. No! <laughs> I'm glad you all elected a representative. <laughs> um, so, uh, you guys want a Mythbuster? Because I can get you a Mythbuster. I got I get you Mythbuster right now. Just make one call and get you know what? It's great. I can get you Mythbuster. Hold on. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. So a little over a decade ago, an idea for a show was born. A show that used science to prove or disprove urban legends. A producer approached a funny-looking man with a funny-looking mustache and a funny-looking beret and said, would you host this show? And the man said, well, uh, I'm not so good on camera, but... <clears throat> But I have a friend who is. <laughs> I've worked with this man for many years. He's a fury of talent and energy. He would go around telling jokes and juggling things as if he had his own television show. He was destined to bring you entertainment every week. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure, my honor, to introduce my co-worker and my friend, Mr. Adam Savage. Thank you, Grant. What an unexpected pleasure. I didn't know I was getting such an introduction. How you nerds doing? So how many of you did I run into today as a ring wraith out on the floor? Come on, a couple of you said, I'll see you at the show. Let's see my, that's my costume today. Yeah. It was awesome, I gotta tell you. It was made by uh, Scott Maple and his people up at uh, Crop Circle up in Canada. Articulated gauntlets and legs. The thing was heavy as hell. I still have a blister on the top of my foot and I almost passed out from the sweating inside the heavy wool. But I still looked awesome! Um, I, I, it's one of the things I really get out of coming here is dressing up in costume and getting the full experience even if it's through a veil of dirty fabric. Um, and we have a lot of fans. I know that there's probably a couple of Jamies wandering around the con. We've actually had them come and visit the shop. We've had guys dressed as Jamie visiting the shop and standing outside taking pictures, which has led to some interesting confrontations out in front. So at one point, Jamie had this shop assistant for about 15 years named Chris Rocha. He was this really sweet kid from South America. And Chris had seen Jamie through working in commercials and then working in films and then working in Mythbusters. And, you know, he'd been around forever. One day, Chris is driving through the Mission District, which is close to where our shop is, and he pulls in up to a car behind Jamie. And, uh, except Jamie's driving a Miata, which is weird, but unmistakably Jamie. So he starts driving to the shop, and of course, Miata's driving to the shop. It's making all the right moves, Jamie and a passenger. And uh, they pull up to the shop, and Chris pulls in behind the blue Miata, and at that moment, Chris's boss turns to the passenger and starts making out with him. <laughs> and Chris's head freaking explodes, because this is literally the last thing he's ever expected to see in his whole life, until the door opens and Jamie Heineman walks out, and, and asks the guy dressed as Jamie to please stop doing that. <laughs> Says, Jamie, Jamie's very good about this. His, his position is engage but be firm. Says, you can visit the shop, but please stop dressing like me. It creeps me out. <laughs> I would just like pretend they didn't exist. Um, so uh, I'm going to start by doing a little name dropping. And it's mostly because I want to explain this. Oh, no, this is the first name dropping. Mr. Alton Brown and his show, which is such a simpatico sister show to Mythbusters, Good Eats, and also he's the host of Iron Chef. 
Um, he and I were corresponding yesterday. It looks like he may come on a future episode of Mythbusters quite soon. I thought you wanted to know. But I also wanted to explain this photo. So, I... I mean, I was there. I remember taking the photo. But two days later, when Storm wrote to me and said, Dude, you have Santorum all over your back. I knew it required some explanation. This is at the White House Press Correspondents' Dinner, which Jamie and I got invited to for some bizarro reason. I don't even know, but it is the weirdest celebrity sighting fest you've ever been to. Um, and I met some really amazing people. Uh, Felicia, uh, sorry, uh, Quincy Jones' daughter, uh, Rashida Jones, Daniel Day Kim from Lost. Where, oh my God, Jennifer Goodwin, she was so cute. I, my wife jokes that I only flirt with women over 75, and it's totally true. I love Diane Keaton. Uh, and uh, Richard Kine was my spirit animal during that week. Craig from Craigslist, ladies and gentlemen. That is geek royalty. Uh, Damien Koulash from OK Go. Um, but so we're at this, and I'm meeting all these people, and we're all asking for pictures of each other. It's hilarious. All bad cell phone pictures of each other. And then this guy walks towards me. And I didn't recognize him at first, and this is really weird to say, because in person, and I hate to tell you this, he's really kind of handsome. It's that thing that, that those magnetic people do that even on TV, you may hate this guy, and I certainly, am, well, I'll tell you. So he comes up and he says, I have to take a picture with you. My 10 and 12 year old boys are obsessed with your show. And I think, well, the world can't be that bad if that's the case. And then I think, how can I take a picture with this man? How can I tell my wife I took a picture with this man? And then I think, you know what? I just have to make sure I say this. And I turn to him and I whisper in his ear, just so you understand, our politics could not be more but diametrically opposed to each other. And he says, that's great! And then we turn, <laughs> and his daughter takes a picture. And his daughters are gorgeous. They're all like Bidens, the whole family. So it turns out that, yeah, politics makes strange bedfellows. But that's not what I came to tell you about. Good, I'm glad that worked just the way I'd hoped. Um, if you follow me on Twitter, and I don't try this at Twitter, uh, you'll know that I have two dogs. These are, the, these are some of the loves of my life. On the left is Huxley, on the right is Maggie. Now, Huxley, he's like the reincarnated Buddha of a dog. I didn't want a dog. I had never had a dog growing up. My dad was terribly allergic. And when we first bought a house in San Francisco about seven years ago, my wife said, well, we should go look at dogs. And I was like, okay, I'll look at dogs. And then she said, I found this dog over at Berkeley Humane. Let's go meet him. And I said, okay, let's meet him. And then afterwards, we'll go out to dinner with Steven. And she said, no, 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 we might bring this dog home. And I'm like, I agreed to look for this dog. I didn't agree to take him home. And then we're driving out. I think maybe I'm being a bit of a wet blanket about it. So come up with a metric that I will agree to. Like, if I fall in love with this dog in the first second I meet it, then I'll be okay. And that's exactly what happened. Huxley, he's a happy dog. Can you believe that? I took that picture. He's a Jedi. He is so spiritual, I have seen Jesus in his ass. That is unretouched. That is a genuine iPhone photo of my dog's ass. Clearly, God is in the details. Really, just let it soak in. The little nubbins that used to be his testicles or the feet. The more you look at it, the weirder it gets. I'll tweet this later on tonight, I promise. People will make pilgrimages to see my dog's butt. Now on the other side is Maggie. She is really, really cute. Oh yeah, she's super crazy cute, but my most terriers, she's an asshole. 
And she doesn't like new people, especially dudes, especially big dudes, especially big dudes who think they can make dogs like them by moving towards them by holding their hand out. She absolutely freaks out at that. Um, but uh, actually, I should preface this with a story. Years ago, when my wife and I were first dating, we had both been around the block. We met in our mid-30s. Uh, we had dated other people. I had been married before. She had almost been married before. But we played this little game with each other. It was just kind of cute, the kind of thing you do with a new love. Um, she wouldn't ever let me see her pee. She would keep the bathroom door closed whenever she was peeing, um, which we all thought was kind of cute and funny, especially for people with as dirty senses of humor as we both had. Um, but the, the streak, it lasted about six or eight months, and it ended with this, this morning in a hotel. We were in a hotel, I think, in Atlanta, and she woke me up and she says, you've got to come see what I just did in the toilet. <laughs> and I was like, really? That's how we're going to break this streak? We're not going to sneak up on it? Me hearing you tinkle? Uh, I don't think I want to come see what you made in the toilet. She's like, no, you really have to come see what I've made in the toilet. I'm sorry, but it's just, it's too important. It's bizarre, it's completely amazing. And I resist, and she really pushes, and I resist, and finally she says, okay, I'll tell you, you've just gotta come see it. My poop looks like a perfect penis. <laughs> and I'm like, that makes me wanna see it less. And she's like, no, it's got like a glands and veins and everything, and I'm like, stop. I, I eventually relented. I went to go look at the cock-shaped turd. And she's right, it was perfect. It was, like, it was like she'd molded a sex toy with her butt. I'm not bragging. I'm just telling. So imagine my surprise. I love the squeak that's coming from over here. Where is she? <laughs> She's like, rrr, rrr. Oh, I'm making it worse. I'm sorry. Don't draw attention to the laugher. Okay. So, <laughs> cut to eight years later. Maggie goes out to the, she's always gotta, uh, she's gotta poop like this, she's gotta run away, she's gotta move on. So imagine my surprise, even though it should come as no surprise when she laid this. Look at that. That's amazing. We each have photos of it from our cameras. I, we chose the better one. I know it's crappy, but still. So what do you do with the photo of a perfect cock-shaped door that your dog laid? You, I sent it to as many of the funny people that I know by email. And I just said, look at what Maggie made. <laughs> and then funny people competed with each other to come up with great lines about a cock-shaped herd. This was the greatest thread ever. Um, one of the first ones that came out was from Stephen Colbert. <laughs> My friend, Steve Malaro from Big Bang Theory wrote, this is the most childish, disgusting email I have ever received. That said, I would totally go down on that cock turd. <laughs> P.S. Cock shaped turd is my Guar cover band. <laughs> cock shaped turd is the name of my Frankie Goes to Hollywood cover band. This is from Will Wheaton. Dear Mr. Savage, thank you for rubbing your dog's magic poop and creation in my face. No, seriously, thank you. I'm playing Chuck Berry in a sure-to-be-controversial biopic, and this has really helped me with my character research. Most sincerely, future Oscar winner, Will Wheaton. <laughs> Dear Mr. Savage, thank you so much for submitting your photograph. Unfortunately, we cannot use it at this time. Thank you, the Republican National Committee. <laughs> Josh Kagan modified D.H. Lawrence. It was like a ride running turgid upward and spreading on the sky. Kirker Butler wrote, thank you, Adam. That picture was the closest I came to seeing my father this whole holiday season. Yeah. 
I actually wrote to Kirker. He writes for the Cleveland Show, wrote for the Family Guy. I wrote to him and said, is it all right if I use this? Because I don't know if you want this on the web. And he was like, with my blessing. <laughs> and later, it, oh, so then Bill Prady, who uh, created Big Bang Theory, said, I found the earliest submission. Mr. Savage is not so original. And later in the merry spring, I did take the hound to frolic and it did make dirty the ground in the following manners. A turd which presented to all who gazed upon it as that gallant organ f standing girded for battle upon the vessels of the seed of man. These are professionals. But then... Paul, <laughs> Paul claimed to have found an earlier citation. <laughs> I feel like he traced it in Photoshop just to make sure it matched. But Storm said he found the earliest possible. The photos titled titled The Monolith. <laughs> now, as I was gathering this together the other day, I was wondering, what's my finale? Honestly, I don't know. And then I decided, I've never entered this into Google, cock-shaped turd. <laughs> <laughs> and it turns out, this is, like, this is like a friend of mine who, you know, 15, 12 years ago was like, I want to register a domain. I know, clown penis, <laughs> already taken. Turds that look like dicks.com. Now, this was a great idea. It actually exists. This is the only picture they have, and they have 1,100 visitors until tonight. Thank you very much.